Yo, it's your boy T-Mac, man. And in this series, I'm going to cover the careers of every player that graced the cover of Madden NFL. Dante Culpepper will be the next athlete we look at as he was a cover athlete of Madden 2002. Dante Culpepper was one of the strongest, biggest quarterbacks we've seen in the NFL in recent history. And we're going to see his progression starting now. Dante Culpepper was drafted round one, pick 11, of the 1999 NFL Draft by the Minnesota Vikings from the University of Central Florida. This is Dante Culpepper in his rookie year. And as you can see, his rating is pretty low. He didn't really have a strong impact for the Minnesota Vikings in his rookie year, as he would only play in one game. And in that one game, he would have three rushing attempts for six yards. The following season, the Minnesota Vikings would release Jeff George and Randall Cunningham, and this would give Dante Culpepper the opportunity he needed going into the 2000 NFL season. In the year 2000, Dante Culpepper would start all 16 games for the Minnesota Vikings. He would throw for 3,937 yards and 33 touchdowns. He would complete 62.7% of his passes. He would be fourth in the league with his 3,937 yards, and he would lead the league in touchdowns with those 33 touchdowns. The Vikings would finish 11-5 and, and get all the way to the NFC Championship game, where they would lose to the New York Giants. The following season, he would be named to the cover of Madden NFL 2002. As you can see on the screen, this is Dante Culpepper's render for Madden 2002. I guess it looks okay considering the time this game was made. The 6'4", 255 pound Dante Culpepper comes in with a 92 overall, 76 speed, 70 strength, 80 awareness, 75 agility, 72 acceleration, 74 break tackle, which is high for a quarterback, ridiculous. 98 throw power and an 83 throw accuracy. Dante Culpepper's 92 overall makes him the fourth highest rated quarterback in Madden 2002. He has the third highest speed rating, the highest strength rating, tied for the fourth highest acceleration rating, has the highest break tackle rating with that 74 break tackle, and he has the second highest throw power rating in the game. The Madden curse would have an effect on Dante Culpepper and the Minnesota Vikings in the years to come. As for the next three seasons, the Minnesota Vikings failed to make the playoffs. And in one of those seasons, 2002 in particular, Dante Culpepper would lead the league in interceptions with 23. During this three-year time span, Dante Culpepper would only have a 17-24 and 24 record as a starter. But in 2004, the Minnesota Vikings and Dante Culpepper would receive a momentary break from the Madden curse. In 2004, Dante Culpepper would have a historically dominant season as he would throw for 4,717 yards, 39 touchdowns, while completing 379 passes and posting a 110.9 quarterback rating. Dante Culpepper would lead the entire NFL in passing yards, passing touchdowns, completions, completion percentage, average, and quarterback rating. Dante Culpepper would receive Pro Bowl and All-Pro honors for the 2004 season. And his Minnesota Vikings would make the playoffs where they would defeat the Green Bay Packers in the wild card round. At the time Dante Culpepper had this season, his 4,717 yards was the fifth highest yard total ever recorded in a season in NFL history. And his 39 touchdowns was also fifth all time in 2004. Dante Culpepper would be rewarded for his efforts in Madden 2006 as he comes in as the second highest rated quarterback in the game with a 98 overall. Dante Culpepper would suffer a knee injury in 2005 that would ultimately lead to him being traded to the Miami Dolphins in 2006. In 2006, Dante Culpepper suffered from poor performance and injuries. He would then be released by the Dolphins in the subsequent offseason of 2007. He would then join his third team in three years in the Oakland Raiders. 
he would only start six games for the Oakland Raiders as injuries would once again derail his season. In 2008, he would then join the Detroit Lions. He would spend his final two seasons with the Detroit Lions, and he would suffer through the ultimate low light of his career when in 2008, he would be part of the first team in NFL history to go 0-16. Well, anyway, it's your boy T-Mac, man. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'm out. Peace.